please help me give a warm welcome uh, to Apostle Mrs. Folonsho Alakija. Just give an electronic one and you can quickly type something there about her. Just a word about her. Just to say welcome, Apostle Folonsho Alakija. You're very welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Good. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. There's so many, many questions. Uh, I went through the book, uh, and I know that you've also written quite a number uh, of books. And we're going to try to structure these a bit so we can go through uh, quite a number of things. Uh, our first question will be on success foundations and principles. And there's a reason why we're starting with that. Uh, we've seen not just from the bio that we read, uh, but from all your activities and from the way uh, the Lord has helped you over the years, uh, that you can be referred to as a successful person. Uh, and indeed, uh, what we find in the book, you, you get, there is a particular statement there. Business is God's business. Please enlighten us more on this statement. As you said, that you'd like me to start with the ingredients for success. S, I usually spell as seek the Lord, trust and obey him at all times. You utilize your time and talent wisely. Time and talent lost can never be regained except by divine grace. C, constantly focus on your goals. C again, credibility. Credibility and reliability must be your watchword. Undependable people get ignored. E, Educate yourself, train and retrain again and again. Ignorance can be expens expensive. S, say no to discouragement agents. Don't accept no for an answer. The last S, sacrifice daily to make a difference. You need to always go the extra mile. That's my ingredient for success. Thank you so very much. Uh, for those of us who probably didn't quickly catch that, there, there, there is usually a recording of this uh, and we can have access to the video. But I'll say by the book, I read because what she's just said now is clearly stated in the book. Uh, but I'll just reiterate one or two of them. Uh, uh, one of which you said is time and talent that is lost can't be regained except by divine intervention. And that's that's very, very critical. And you said ignorance can be expensive. And you must sacrifice, you must sacrifice daily. Uh, thank you very much for that, uh, for a deeper into that, please buy the book that you can read very, very clearly. Uh, one other thing that is very, very evident in reading through all your work is, you know, your focus, interest in family. So uh, we're going to ask a question uh, or two about family because we can see that it is very, very dear to you. And so, according to your book, man, uh, we are deeply rooted in the culture of our family. Uh, we'd like to ask, what role has family background play in your own journey to success in life? And secondly, what advice do you have for the this current generation of parents? Because they face quite a lot of things that are different from our generation. Uh, so, but drawing from your own experience, both as 
are a parent and now a grandparent, what will be your advice for the current generation? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. First and foremost, family is very important to God. It's through family that families that we can procreate and be fruitful in the world. Families give us stability. Stability in our lives in all that we plan to do and all that we get to do. We hold each other's hands and we have each other as support and the right backings that we need. It's in our, it's in our unity and our oneness that we can really uh, prosper in all that we do. God is also very, very particular about families staying together. I come from a back background of 52 children and eight wives, the polygamous setting. Though we are 46 now, but you won't believe it. We all know each other. We all love each other. And we've come a long way. We're always looking out for one another. Now, families are getting smaller for obvious reasons. The economy, uh, wherever you find the polygamy, economies are making families shrink and making parents think twice before they begin to have larger ones like our parents and our forefathers used to have. So times have changed. However, I know that I learned a lot, a lot from mine. And parents need to make sure that they do the same for their children. We have to make sure that our children are well educated. It has become extremely important. Education has become extremely important. But education alone is not enough. How we bring our children up at home makes a huge difference in their future. And of, of, of course, the future of their children. Parents must make sure that they do not do preferential treatment. They don't practice it within their, amongst their children because it can bring um, ways and manners that will make, make them turn out right in the end. Jealousy will become inherent if things like that are practiced. Parents must make sure that there are ground rules within the family that the children need to adhere to. They must bring children up in a godly manner. Make them realize that there's a God up there that's watching everything that we do. We must make sure that they're going to be useful to the society and to themselves. It all depends on how we bring them up and the things that we teach them, the things that we remind them about on a day-to-day -day basis. So the point in time when it's time to get married and leave home so that we can sit back and be relaxed that God has helped us to do a good job. We're not perfect as parents. We must always ask for God's guidance. Children themselves must obey their parents. They must listen to their, their guidance. They must look up to their parents for the way that they are supposed to behave. And when they need advice, they must go to their parents. And as far as husbands or fathers are concerned, they in their, in, their, in their family must ensure that they continue to be the representative of Christ in every Christian home, most especially. And regardless of their religion, God has put, God has put every man as head of the family. And they must be the role models that God has made them to be. They must not shirk their responsibilities. They must ensure that they provide for their families, from, from their wife to their children. 
They must educate. They, they, they must provide for the for the wife, love their wives, and make sure that everything that their wives and their children need are available to them. Wives must love their husbands as well, and they must respect their husbands. And ideally, these days, well, we know that even from the start, God created women as helpers to their husbands. So the woman must be available to help her husband and of course at the same time look after the children. But it has now become paramount and extremely important that a woman has something doing economically to be able to provide support uh, in every way so that she's not only looking up to her husband for everything so that we can make the world a better place. There are almost, well, as I everybody knows, 49.6% of women in the population of the world. And charity begins at home. As we are bringing up our children, making the world a better place economically at the same time. I believe that we all have a role to play in our families so that the kind of children that we have get to live their lives and pass it on to the next generation will begin to make the world better rather than make it retrogress. Wonderful. For Married 101 to what should I call it now? Marriage seven or marriage eight? <laughs> As we speak uh, in university lingo in those days. Uh, we want to thank you for that. Uh, just a quick one or two is uh, that I can note from what you have said. Uh, family is important to God uh, and family gives us stability and through it we can support each other. And we have seen from your example, uh, 52 children, uh, that's not a small feat. Uh, and from what you have said, you're still united. But thank you for all also the other things you have said, uh, that we should make sure that family is a place of learning. And not just that, train the children, but we must also provide them a good education while we have ground rules and also we bring them up in a godly, godly way. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am, for that. I'm sure everybody is waiting. Okay, family, good. Oh. Business, talk about business, talk about entrepreneurship. Uh, and so we're going to have uh, explore that a bit. And uh, the question we want to ask you, ma'am, is, well, I want to draw from your own personal experiences now. I mean, there are too many people who have gone through uh, MBAs and DBAs and all of that. But I want to draw from your own personal experiences uh, and just show us uh, an advice, give advices. What key lessons would you give to anyone in terms of succeeding as an entrepreneur? Succeeding as an entrepreneur. Key lessons from my own personal life. Well, first and foremost, I believe that before you go to any type of business, and before you decide that you want to be an entrepreneur, you better be ready for whatever is thrown at you. Don't forget, when you are uh, thrown uh, lemon, uh, uh, lemons, yes, sometimes you may need to learn to make lemonade. Now, I believe that before you do anything at all, you need to ask God what kind of business you should even go into. I've done that on occasions and they've worked for me. The ones that didn't work for me are the ones where maybe I disobeyed God or I forgot to ask. So that is the first step. And first, yes, seek God at all times. That's very, very important. And I've always said, 
business is God's business. You can't do business properly and prosper as God would want it or as God can do it to make it even wider than what you envisaged. If you put God the closet. Gold, the silver is his. That's what he says in his Bible. Everything belongs to him. He can provide anything and everything that we ask. All we need to do is ask. We need wisdom? Ask him. We need direction? Ask him. He can provide all you need. Now, having said that, you will be faced with difficulties. You will be faced with what you didn't plan for. My, 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 my answer to that is that even while you're preparing to start, you need to find mentors. Mentors are those that can guide you in the physical. We know God can guide you in the spiritual. But those who have seen it, done it, been there, and have excelled, have, have succeeded, you can learn from the pitfalls that they have had to face so that you won't get your fingers burnt and you can save yourself some trouble and some time. You, there'll be times when you'll have to take risks. Coming to risks, we had to take a very, very big risk. When we're faced with the opportunity to decide to go into oil exploration and production, it's one of the riskiest businesses that you can get into in the world. You can hit a dry hole, meaning that all the money that you have spent to get to that point, and which also takes years, before you will find out whether there's any oil in that field or not, is crucial, is important. You could lose all the money that you ever had or that you ever borrowed. And yet, it can make you. So I always say that it can either make you or mar you. So you have to think deeply. You have to have God holding your hand so that you won't fail. So it's important to realize at the off onset and at the offset that it could go either way. Oil, the oil industry can be very lucrative and yet it can say you to a situation where you could become a beggar. It could be that bad. And you may have to try to find ways of picking up the pieces again. So from my experience, as I, and because I've given you some of my uh, uh, ingredients for success, I believe that if you follow them, you'll find that they could also be very, very general for all of us. But there are experiences that I faced and things I picked up along the way that have helped me to get to where I am today. To God be the glory. Um, you will find that you need to plan. You don't plan, we all know we are planning to fail. So have someone holding your hand in the physical, make your plans, do homework, set short-term, medium-term, and long-term plans. And as you continue to go along, you can make amends. Where you have made a mistake, you can quickly correct your mistakes. However, some mistakes can be very costly which is why we need to get educated 
I had to go back to the classroom. I had situations where, especially at the beginning, men were asking me what I was doing within the oil industry and why I had to come into it. And I was asking them, what makes you think that this is only for the men? So I had to go back to class. I pulled up my socks. I rolled up my sleeves. And I earned my place at the table of decision makers and oil giants to the glory of God. Great. Um, <laughs> again, thank you very much, uh, my dear Apostle, uh, for that wonderful time.